Hi, I'm Fernando. I'm standing inside an environmental chamber known as the White Room, which is used as the final preparation and boarding for the astronauts into the Apollo module of the Saturn V rocket. This chamber is on the end of arm number 9, which is the command module access arm, which is connected to the launch umbilical tower on top of the mobile launcher. That's a lot of terms to fit into an intro, so let's break it down into bits so we can go through the research, design and build process. So rockets are put together vertically on top of a large movable platform. So they're assembled inside the vertical assembly building on these platforms and then those platforms are driven out to the launch pad. So here we're looking at mobile launcher one. At the bottom there's the launcher base which has a lot of rooms with pipes and connections and computer monitoring systems. There are engine hold down arms that clamp the rocket into place until it takes off. Then the big red bit up the side is the launch umbilical tower. So it's a large tower with lots of umbilical arms which they fold back and forth. So they initially they're connected to the rocket and then as the rocket is taking off they fold away so they don't get in the way. And then right at the top there's a crane just to help with final bits of assembly. So if we look at a couple of reference pictures, we start to get an idea for the kind of the colors and what we're looking at and can zoom in and look at a little bit more detail. Some interesting bits of information I found is inside the Saturn V flight manual, they've got a detailed schematic of each of the two floors. So this was pretty key for getting the exact layout of those rooms. Another key reference piece was the original picture we looked at in one of the first videos for some of the floor levels of the vertical assembly building. This actually shows us the exact level of each of those struts on the towers going the whole way up. I was also able to find a website, apollomaniacs.com, where they've got a collection of a lot of the original design schematics. So here in the vertical assembly building, we have four main high bays, and each high bay can be configured for a different rocket. High bay one was used to build the Apollo 11 mission and the Saturn V rocket, which is the mission where we landed on the moon. So the mobile launches are designed to fit into this entire area here, and the towers fit up between these structures on the side here. Once the rocket is constructed, the doors open to the sides here, these main doors open, which takes 45 minutes, and then the entire platform with the rocket is driven out slowly to the launch pad. So let's build. These are the engine hold down arms and the rocket sits here and actually takes off while still on this platform. So this gap in the middle is for the rocket engines to fire through. So we have the launcher base and the engine hold down arms. The next bit to build is the launch umbilical tower with the crane on top. So this tower has stairs that go the entire way up, as well as a central elevator that goes up as well. On key floors there are these umbilical arms, and they swing out of the way once the rocket takes off. At the top there is a workshop, And then right at the top, there is a crane. So the mobile launcher is looking great. Let's turn our attention to the rocket, which is the Saturn V. The Saturn V is the most powerful rocket ever built. It was designed during the Apollo program and weighs around 2.8 million kilograms. The rocket is comprised of three main stages, 
At liftoff, the first stage is burning, and once that runs out of fuel, it detaches and drops away, and then the second stage starts burning, and then once that runs out of fuel, it detaches and walks away, and then the third stage starts burning. Each stage uses slightly different engines, thrusters, and slightly different propellants. My strategy to design the Saturn V was to take the overall size, which is 110 meters, take a good reference picture on the left you can see here. I used Excel to make it 110 rows high, and then I worked out a color coding line up the top. So this strategy allowed me to plan it out in Minecraft while building each of the stages and kind of the main key areas of each. So I built these reference pillars with the same colors as my matching diagram. And here you can see I've kind of split each of the stages out into a separate little bit, just so I could focus on them one at a time. Let's have a look at the first stage and I'll show you some of the details and the inside. So starting at the bottom, there are five F1 engines, each with a thrust power of 7.5 million pounds. These engines run on kerosene and liquid oxygen. The first tank at the bottom of stage one is filled with kerosene. One of the things that's interesting about the, this tank though, is there's actually liquid oxygen lines insulated going right through to the tank above it. So this bottom tank is liquid oxygen. And then as we kind of come up, you can see that that tank closes off and these lines for the liquid oxygen continue. And they actually come from this tank above it here. Now inside each of these tanks, there's also baffles to stop the swirling. So they're called anti-swirl baffles as well as anti-vortex baffles. So then for stage two, we're starting with J2 engines. So they're a little bit less powerful. They can still do a million pounds of thrust, but as opposed to the 7.5 million pounds of the bigger engines. So stage two, again, has a couple of tanks in it. This first tank being liquid oxygen. And then the next tank is liquid hydrogen. Now the liquid hydrogen tank has a special honeycomb structure to allow the fluid to permeate through. So the third stage, there is a single J2 engine and then again uses liquid hydrogen and then liquid oxygen. So we can see this green tank coming up with the anti-swirl baffles, a little bit of a membrane between the anti-vortex baffles and leading into the liquid oxygen tank. So the final part of the third stage is the module that landed on the moon called the Eagle. If we look over here, you'll be able to see the base of it. It's got a tiny little engine and there's a little landing feet. Here it's got that single engine uh, and it really is pretty small. There's not much room in here to do much, but I wanted to put that in there. That's a pretty key piece of history. The Eagle has landed. Uh, when you hear that, that is when this particular part of the rocket landed on the moon. And then there's another tiny little spaceship to return back with a tiny little um, tank inside it here. And then we have the Apollo module itself, which is a tiny little triangle on top. This is the thing that they fall back to Earth. It has some parachutes and then they'll land in the ocean. One cool thing right at the top of it is this rocket here. And this is designed so that in the case of anything going wrong during takeoff, this whole top bit in the command module will blast off to safety and fly off to the side. So this brings us back to the start, which is where we can see we've got the mobile launcher platform. It's sitting on some pillars here. We've got the engine hold downs clamped to the rocket. Underneath this rocket, if we sneak in under here, we'll be able to see those engines ready to go, ready to blast this rocket off into space. As we go up, there's the various different umbilical tower arms. And then this final umbilical tower, there's this platform that wraps around here, comes all the way around and the astronauts can come into the white room, which I talked about at the start. So we have the white room, you can even duck down and kind of get inside and then sit down inside. Now there's not enough room to do anything exciting in here at all, uh, but we've got a seat and a, and a lever. So hopefully this has all made a lot of sense. Inside High Bay 1, you can see there's a mobile launching platform sitting up on these pillars so that it can be removed from here and taken to the launch pad. On top of it, there is the Apollo 
Saturn V rocket. Sneaking up here, I can actually give you a bit of a sneak preview of something I'm working on at the moment, which are the extensible work platforms. And so these sit in here and they will slide in around the rocket. So this allows the workers access to the rocket as it's being put together. So the idea is there'll be one, these work platforms are on either side in this kind of gap in the frame here. That's it for today. If you'd like this content, check out my other videos, leave some encouragement. Thanks everyone, have a great day.